Now, it's time to close the box. What I want to do, I need to fit this top to the sides. So I'm marking where the braces intersect the sides so that I can notch the sides out and fit this top. And I'll mark the bottom X brace arms, even though I'm not going to notch them into the lining, so that when I lay a straight edge across the rim, I'll, have, I'll get the right angle up here in order to notch. the linings properly. And I just take a saw and saw where I marked it up to where the linings meet the edge of the side. And sometimes you can't get an exact cut because the kerf in the lining is right where you need to make a mark. But you do the best that you can. And then I just take a chisel and cut it to depth with the chisel. And it's pretty easy uh, by cutting first and then using the chisel. They just sort of pop out. But what this does is it ensures that when I glue the top on it, it will be centered in where it's supposed to be in position relative to the rim. And now I'll take that straight edge and I'll mark where the upper X brace arms should be the angle at which I need to cut or notch out the sides. And we moved a bit to try to get it where you could see more of what I was doing. But it's the same process. It's cut. Now some people cut through the sides because all of that's going to be covered with binding anyway. Uh, whatever you want to do. 
this way, you know, if I wanted to build a guitar without binding, by doing it this way and learning how to do it this way, I could do that. And as a matter of fact, you'll see once I get the top and the back glued onto this rim, uh, I'll show it to you when it's all trimmed and stuff, and you'll see that, you know, I could easily go without bindings on this guitar if I wanted to. I just don't want to. But sometimes, you know, people want a kind of a simple kind of look. So they, you know, they pick a guitar that doesn't have any binding on it. And that can work. Uh, I've owned guitars like that. Uh, they look very, very nice. It's just all in what you want. For me, the purpose of building is not only just to build a guitar, but to build one, first of all, with the specs that I want, and second of all, more importantly, to build one that uh, teaches me the basics of building guitars. And you see I'm marking the X braces and upper transverse brace that hangs over so that I can cut it to fit the lining. on the other side and just take a chisel and pop it off. That one I just was able to pull off. And so now checking the fit before I begin to glue it, making sure that everything fits right. And a little bit of adjustment. Once I'm satisfied that I got that notch properly, then we'll start gluing up. And once again, you want to use the right amount of glue, not too little and not too much. I don't want uh, a bunch of glue squeeze out that I either would have to clean up or that would be ugly. If someone was to look at the uh, underside of the top one day, a repairman or, or anybody with a mirror or whatever. And also, this is like a practice run for the back. Because when I glue the back on, you can see if it's nasty. Uh, if the glue leaks out and, and it looks all nasty, you'll be able to see that through the sound hole. Now, I might be able to reach through the sound hole and clean most of that up but that's a pain in the rear end too because you got to get your arm into that tiny little three and seven eighths inch uh, diameter hole sound hole which is what this uh, model guitar uses 
a thread knot's a four inch hole. Three and seven eighths, one eighth inch. Not a whole lot of difference between the two, <laughs> really. Anytime you're cramming your arm through a sound hole trying to work on a guitar, it's never uh, easy. Make sure all the uh, braces sit down and they're notched positions, and then then we start to clamp. And I use little the little uh, clamping calls that I use to clamp the braces. And now that the top is dry, I've come back now. We're going to close the box by gluing on the back. That's what it's called when you glue the last soundboard whether it's a top or a back when both of these are glued onto the instrument in building parlance that's called closing the box which is the name of this video or something similar And one of the benefits of the tight bond that I use is that it's got a good open time and I don't have to worry about the glue drying where it won't get a good bond before I put the pieces together. And this is a repeat of the top I'll glue both the heel and the tail of the guitar first so that I can make sure that I have it centered properly on the instrument on the rims and then I'll go around the instrument clamping down I want to kind of get these, uh, the waist here down good because that is where the arch for the back begins. And so begins to drop there. And that might be a problem area if I'm not careful. that doesn't want to come down. And so I'm going to clamp there at the waist before I do anything else. So make sure that I'm bringing that down to meet the rims properly. And it's just a matter of clamp after clamp after clamp until the back is glued down sufficiently enough for me that I'm satisfied that it's a good solid joint all the way around the back rim of the instrument. And here it is, glued up. Let that dry. And here it is, out of the clamps with the back and the top trimmed to the sides. Box is closed. Been waiting to get this done a long time. That's it. Thanks for watching. God bless you. I'll talk to you later. Love it.